Inna alhamdulillah wa nasta'inu wa nasta'kiru wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusna wa min sayyati amalina man yadillahu falamudilala wa man yudhil falamudilala wa shadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika la wa shadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu Verily all praise is due to Allah We praise him, we glorify him We seek his assistance and we ask for his forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the evil actions of ourselves. Whomsoever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whomsoever Allah misguide, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And our noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, is his messenger and his rasul. I greet you all with the best of greetings, the greeting of the people of Jannah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. My name is Kudrat Adenike Atoluye, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all to today's lecture, one of our critical lecture series, critical thought lecture series. And this is a series two of lectures, a post Ramadan lecture organized by Salam Sisters for Manchester United Kingdom. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm your host for today, and joining me is Dr. Amina Saliu from Abuja to anchor this program with me. Alhamdulillah. We, I would like to thank you all for joining us the last time we had our first Ramadan lecture when we had the pleasure of inviting the Chief Missioner of Ansaruddin and the person of Sheikh Abdurrahman Ahmad who presented a thought-provoking lecture on how to nurture fitra in our children. Alhamdulillah, I believe you all took away lots of admonition from that lecture and we pray and continue to pray for our Imam that may Allah continue to grant him goodness in this life and in the hereafter. Amin. Before I hand you over to Ajia Amina Salih, who, who is going to you know, set the ball rolling. I'll quickly tell you a little bit about Salam Sisters. We are Salam Sisters. Salam Sisters started in 2014 by a group of sisters coming together to empower one another to um, seek the pleasure of Allah. Salam Sisters provide support and solidarity for the Muslim Ummah and in particular women and their community. We do dawah, we do the um, memorization of the Quran, um, word for word analysis of the uh, Quran. And recently we started doing Sira, we got the children involved. Um, we say catch them young. Our intention is to ensure that the children understand the message of Islam. And you know, by learning the Sira, we aim to you know, adopt the ways of life of our noble prophet, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we also do lectures. So today, I promise you, you're going to have, you know, a wonderful time with our, you know, um, guest speaker. Um, we, uh, the topic for today is the value of Ramadan beyond the holy months. You can see from the slide from the presentation there, our children flashing their certificates of attendance and of, of achievement during the first Rukhrani competition we had just before the lockdown. Mashallah, may Allah bless these children and make all our children the coolness of our eyes, I mean. Stay with us, don't go away, because at the end of the lecture, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions from our guest speaker. So I'll now hand you over to Hajia Amina, who is going to you know, set the ground rules and kick the ball rolling for today. Bismillah. Amina, over to you. Hello, Amina, are you there? Right, while we're still waiting for um, Dr. Amina to take over, um, like I was saying, today we have the pleasure. Masha are you there? All right, mashallah. Yeah. 
Sorry, I mean, I think your audio is not very clear. I think um, our sister Amina there is having a bit of a technical problem. Uh, we'll wait for her to, you know, revive our connection and we'll take it from there. Hello, Amina, can you hear us? Are you there? Right, anyway, we, like I said, Amina was supposed to set the ground rules. Please be aware that you're being recorded and um, if, as you join us, please mute your mic. Uh, while we're waiting for Haji Amina to, you know, reset. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, the technology today, well, Allah knows best. Alhamdulillah. I hope, um, um, thank you, my sister, for speaking to the ground rules, and I hope you all can hear me. The ground rules have also been posted in the chat box um, so that you can familiarize yourselves with um, what the rules are um, today. Um, permit me at this point to invite um, um, one of our dear sisters, um, to introduce one of our special children, um, Hajia Saida Hamdala uh, Bello, over to you. Asalaamu Alaikum, Hajia Hamdala, are you there? Um, she might be having a bit of a technical hitch, so I think we'll just um, step in there and um, and take things forward. Um, like uh, Alaja Kudrat had mentioned at the start of this conversation, Alhamdulillah, we're very proud of our children. We're very proud of their achievement and the fact that we're creating a successor generation of Muslimas. And today we have one of our darling daughters um, who is going to recite to, to kick off this conversation, Surah to Dua? Please say salamu alaikum and marhaban to Rauda Adeyemi. Salamu alaikum. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولا سوف يعطيك ربك فتوضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث صدق الله العظيم الله أكبر الله أكبر ما شاء الله ما شاء الله ما شاء الله الحمد لله رب العالمين May Allah continue to make you the coolness of our eyes, dear Alda. May Allah accept that dua. Rabbi zid nizri yatatay ya batin. Rabbi zid nizri yatatay ya batin. Ya Allah, give us great children who will keep the legacy of Islam with us and beyond us. Masha Allah. Distinguished uh, sisters and brothers, I'm checking my screen to see that we have our special guests in the house already. Um, Hajia Kudrat is our big sister in 
Yes, definitely she's here. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Amazing values. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to look for her on the camera to, to ask that she please turns on her camera so that we can have a sense of who our special guest is today. Yeah. Um, next, I have the honor of Masha reading her. Allah. Masha Allah. <laughs> I'm reading her citation, our special guest today, a very big sister in Islam. Born in Lagos, Nigeria, over six decades ago, had to believe it looking at her, where our guest speaker had her primary and secondary education. Our guest speaker graduated from King Abdulaziz University, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. She's passionate about learning and teaching Quranic, Arabic, and Islamic studies. Our special guest today started a broadcasting career, which has spanned over 40 years with the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN. After voluntary retirement from radio broadcasting, our guest joined MITV as head of Islamic department until she went into independent production of both radio and television programs. Notable amongst which were light upon light and be blessed. In fact, when you mention her name, people will wonder who you're talking about. But when you say a larger light upon light, they're like, oh yes, of course, a household name, mashallah. Currently, our special guest lives in Houston, Texas, in the United States of America, where she continues to teach Quran, Arabic and Islamic studies in masajids, but mostly online. Distinguished sisters and brothers in Islam, it gives me great pleasure to have the honor and the privilege to introduce to you in this equally blessed month of Shawwal, a sister, a mentor, a friend to many, an erudite Muslima and scholar, Alaja Ganiat, Akorede Alayas, light upon light. Mashallah. Maria Ba Bikum Bikum Bikum. Maria Ba Bikum. And to welcome. It's a special day. It's a special day, and you have to welcome a special sister in a special way. Who better, therefore, to do this than the curator and the moderator and the founder of Salam Sisters, who has a very interesting history with our special guest today and you're going to be hearing it from her my <laughs> co-host Alaja Pudrat Adeyemi Bismillah a special welcome for our sister Mariaba Mariaba my big sister thank you very much for honoring this invitation and it's a great pleasure to have you on this program and um, I have a special surprise for you and to welcome you especially today I would um, call on my brother Brother Abdurrahman Leki, popularly known as Abu Hanifa. Uh, yeah, that's what I was waiting to see, that expression on your face. Interestingly, <laughs> Abu Hanifa <laughs> and myself were both co-presenters <laughs> on Light of the Night back in the days in LTV Channel 8, wow. Lagos, Nigeria. So join me in welcoming our big sister and mentor to this great um, lecture with a nostalgic song as well. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Good morning. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah. Abu Hanifah. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum alaikum. I knew, I knew good, I would good to see you. <laughs> this is a Alhamdulillah. 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 That's a special thank you. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> so. Mashallah. Mashallah. Welcome our guest speaker. We steal the floor to you, ma'am. Ma yeah, ma thank you so much. Wow, subhanAllah. Yes, yeah. I can't get over this surprise. Abu Hanifa, it's so nice to see you again, mashallah. <laughs> that was meant, oh, it was that. actually meant, it yes, was actually meant to so come much. up at the end of the program, but I thought <laughs> you would be so excited. 
You'll be oh so excited God. to see him and this is a big, big wow. surprise for you. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المسلمين. ما شاء الله الحمد لله. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستغفر ونتوب إليه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا. من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي دائما لا يموت ابدا بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير واشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا وامامنا وشفيعنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وانصاره وازواجه وذريته واهل بيته واتباعه واشياعه ومن اتبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين وعلينا معهم اجمعين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته عليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته الحمد لله حمدا الحمد لله شكرا الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله على كل حال الحمد لله قبل كل حال الحمد لله بعد كل حال الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم um i it gives me great pleasure wallahi i'm so happy i'm so honored i'm so privileged i feel so privileged to be invited onto this uh platform salam sisters may almighty allah reward you abundantly in this world and in the hereafter with the goodness and the greatness of this world and that of the hereafter may allah protect our children continue to guide them continue to make them the coolness of our eyes i am proud of you my sisters and i thank allah for for guiding you onto what you are doing for choosing you you know and um, honoring you with this assignment that he has he has blessed you with may almighty allah grant you um excellence in terms of achievement in in this um uh project that uh, you have gladly accepted from allah may almighty allah ease your task for you and reward you with the highest place in our jannah ya rabbal alamin mm -hmm. i am very proud to hear one of our children recite the quran this is what gives me hope that there is hope for tomorrow that we are given the baton to our children and we can see them already taking the mantle of leadership from us if we do not achieve this then we will not have achieved anything Alhamdulillah for your foresight. I, I thank Allah for what you're doing and what you have done and what you're going to continue to do, inshallah ta'ala. So to the subject matter, uh, I would um, like to seek your indulgence, your, your permission to share my, um, my PowerPoint presentation. Um, if I have the go ahead, I will just... Um, put on my slides so that yes. you know we can all go through this together yeah bismillah Ajay. bismillah um host disabled participant screen sharing that is what um, i'm getting yes we're going to make you a co-host right yes. away Elijah, so, so that, that you can then share your screen yes, uh, oh. yeah i've just done that okay good okay so i can share now all right good mm. Can we all see it? <clears throat> yes. yes. Okay. All right. So, so I'll be lahi na shaitan rajim. Bismillah rahman rahim. The okay, but I. 
Uh, just give me a second, please. But I, ca I can't see the rest of us. I can only see my screen, but I guess that's okay. But I, I can see your screen. Well, everybody can see my screen? Yes, I, I can think, see your I screen. Think you can, okay, so the subject matter is the value of Ramadan beyond the month. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We thank Almighty Allah for seeing us through a very special Ramadan, a Ramadan like no other. We okay. We fasted in the month of Ramadan. So I'd like to start with what we did in Ramadan and what we achieved in the month of Ramadan. If we're looking at beyond Ramadan, you know, beyond the month of Ramadan, let us take a look at what we did in Ramadan and what are the things we were able to achieve. I'm sure we have heard this again and again, but the Quran says, for that in, we should always continue to remind ourselves because we, we tend to benefit from reminding ourselves. So in Ramadan, <clears throat> excuse me, we heard the direction from Allah, the commandment from Allah when he says in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, chapter 2 of the whole Quran, verse 183 to 184, he says, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون O you who have believed, decreed upon you is fasting as it was decreed upon those before you that you may become righteous أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريض أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر Fasting for a limited number of days, 29 or 30 days, in this COVID-19 uh, COVID fasting of 2020 and year 1441, of Hijra, Alhamdulillah, unique numbers for the Gregorian calendar and the Hijra calendar. Those numbers really, really are unique, you know, 2020 and 1441. Fasting for a limited number of days, 30 days in this regard. So whoever among you is ill or on a journey during them, then an equal number of days are to be made up. And upon those who are able to fast but with hardship, a ransom if they have some difficulty like those that are sick the aged the those that are on a journey but are experiencing some hardship they can leave the fasting for that period and then pay it back you know in days to come but for like those who have terminal diseases or or those who are already you know aged they cannot fast at all then a ransom a substitute of feeding a poor person each day. And whoever volunteers to do extra, that is who, whoever can fast and also feed the poor, that is doing a little extra, you know, I mean, it's just enough for you to do your own fast. But if you can also fast and then still, you know, give charity like someone who is not fasting, then it is better for you. The more you do, the more you get, you know. I mean, even, even if you don't know any word in Arabic, we know tatawa, where tatawa, we hear our, you know, moms and dads saying, uh, I'm doing tatawa, I'm doing tatawa. Tatawa means doing a little extra. We do tatawa in our salat, we do tatawa in, in a performance of our hajj, in performance of umrah, in, in, in fasting. We do tatawa all the time in all the acts of ibadah that you know, Allah has, um, uh, um, that has uh, commanded us to do. We do a little extra, it is at all. So whoever does any extra in any of these ibadats, you do nawafil, you do uh, extra salat, you do extra charity, you do extra fasting, you do extra hajj, you do extra, extra anything that is good that Allah wants us to do, it is better for you. 
the more you do, the more reward you get. But to fast is best for you. And this is for those who feel they cannot fast. For example, a pregnant woman, a woman that is breastfeeding, um, someone on a journey. Allah says, if you can fast during this one month of Ramadan, then that is best for you. If you cannot, then you can do the fidya, you can feed the poor, you can do whatever you want to do. But if you can fast, that is best for you. This one month is a month like no other, if only you knew. All right, so. So in the month of Ramadan, we were able to fast like never before. And we were assured that whatever we do in the month of Ramadan, we have multiples of reward. You know, everything is doubled and multiplied for us. So our fasting in the month of Ramadan is like, you know, fasting for like a whole year, especially if we add to it six days of the month of Shawwal that we're in, like the Prophet Sallallahu said, Mansam Ramadan, hmm? whoever fasted in the month of Ramadan and then added six days of Shawwal to it, it is like it is like fasting for a whole year without, without stopping, like every day of a year. That is the reward we get. That is what is recorded for us and that is what we get, inshallah. Um, that is what we are rewarded for. So, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. Just give me a second. I'm sorry, I think I put the wrong slide. So I, I put, I think I put the, let me, let me just confirm. I have the correct. Um, Um, Assalamu alaikum. I hope you all can see this slide. I changed the slide. If you can still see the slide, can you please let me know? We yes. can see. Yes, Salat. we can see clearly. What we did and achieved in Ramadan. So achieved multiplied. in Ramadan. Correct. So that multiplied. Is that what you can see? Absolutely. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's the correct one then. Alhamdulillah. So we what we achieved in Ramadan is the fact that we fasted. We fasted, you know, like, you know, other in, 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 there is no other month like Ramadan, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And Allah granted us the, Allah granted us the, um, the tawfiq to witness the month of Ramadan and participated in it. We fasted. <clears throat> we fasted and you know um we fasted with the with with full iman and with um we fasted with iman for a number for a number of days whoever is able to yeah just give me a second. I need to move the. Okay. All right. 
So fasting for a limited number of days. So whoever among you is ill or on a journey during them, then an equal number of days are to be made up. And upon those who are unable to fast, but with hardship, a ransom, a substitute, or feeding a poor uh, person each day. And whoever volunteers to do extra, it is better for him, but the fast is best for you. Right. All right. So, Shahrul Ramadan, Alladhi Unzila Fihi Al Quran, Huda Linas, Wa Bayinat Min Al Huda, Min Al Huda, Wal Furqan. Faman Shahid Min Kum Al Shahr Fal Yasum. The month of Ramadan is that in which was revealed the Quran, a guidance for the people and clear proofs of guidance and criterion. So whoever cites the new moon of the month, let him fast it. Whoever is ill or on a journey, then an equal number of, of other days. Allah intends for you ease and does not intend for you hardship and wants for you to complete the period and to glorify Allah for that which he has guided you, or to which he has guided you, and perhaps you would be grateful. So in the month of Ramadan, we achieve the recitation of the Holy Quran. We read the Quran like you know, in, in, in any other month. You know, we are connected with the Quran. Our Qurans are off the shelf. Uh, you know, for, for the first time in a long time, to some people, Ramadan is the only time they pick up the Quran to read. You know, not because um, they don't want to, but because they just can't get around to doing it. But in the, month, in the month of Ramadan, even if it is not in all the days of Ramadan, we find ourselves clinging onto the Quran, going from one Jesus to another, and reading and trying to understand and attending muhadarat and attending lectures, you know, of tafsir and all that, just to understand the Quran. We are connected to the Quran like in in like at no other time so we thank almighty allah we're able to achieve that in the month of ramadan and that is what we learned from surah al-baqarah uh, chapter 185 and what again did we do and achieve in ramadan salat multiplied one fart is given to us times 70. like you play you pray one fart salat it is recorded for you as if you have observed 70 for you know, 70 fard solat, compulsory solat. And your wife is turned into fard for you. You know, so Allah says, Akimu solat ali duluk, li duluk shamsi, ila ghasaki layli, wa Quran al fajr, inna Quran al fajr kana mashuda. Allah encourages us to establish prayer at the decline of the sun from its meridian until the darkness of the night, and also the Quran of the dawn. So, solat al fajr. Allah says, indeed, the recitation of dawn is ever witnessed. Now, when we're done with our sahur, we find ourselves lingering, you know, trying to make sure that we don't fall asleep. We hold on to our sibha, we hold on to our Quran, we're re reciting the Quran, just waiting for fajr. You know, at other times we find ourselves, some of the times we oversleep. By the time we wake up, the sun is already up. Subhanallah, and we, find, we wake up with such guilt. Subhanallah, how could I have slept for so long? But in Ramadan, most times in Ramadan, you know, and I hope I'm not only speaking for myself, we're able to stay around reading the Quran or making dhikr of Allah, remembrance of Allah, doing tasbih, doing tahleel, doing istighfar, doing all, all of these things, just waiting for Fajr to come in. And once we're able to observe the latter Fajr, we remember what the Prophet said. We remember what Allah says in this, in this surah, in this ayah, that so, uh, Quran al-Fajr, you know, which is also the Salat al-Fajr, because in Salat al-Fajr, we're encouraged to recite the Quran, you know, choose the longest, some of the longest, you know, surah, or ayat of the Quran that we have memorized to read so that we prolong it. What are we prolonging? We're prolonging the presence of the angels around us. The angels that are, that are with us recording our deeds. You know, they're on shifts. Some angels will come to us from Asir and they will stay with us till Fajr. And others will come and take over from those ones from Fajr till Asir. But during Salat al Asr, scholars make us to understand that these two sets of angels are present with us. You know, the ones that have been with us from Asr 
to Fajr and the ones that are going to take over from them from Ma'asir till Fajr, they are all going to witness our Salat al-Fajr. They're going to witness our Quran al-Fajr. Scholars make us to understand that angels do not necessarily read the Quran, but they listen to the Quran and they love to listen to the Quran. And when you recite the Quran, when they hear you reciting the Quran, they are so pleased with you that they are praying for you. They are asking Allah to forgive you. And they, 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 they love to be in your company. And you know, they look forward to that day when Allah is going to send them to come take your life. And they will be, they will be telling you that the, there is a, today that Allah is taking you back to him, there is nothing for you to fear. We were your company companions when you were alive. We were always there, you know, witnessing your recitation of the Quran, witnessing your Salat al-Fajr. We're always with you when you call on Allah, when you make your zikr. We're always with you when you seek Allah's forgiveness. We're always with you when you finish your Salat and you did not get off from the spot where you made your Salat. You're asking for Allah's forgiveness. We're always with you praying and asking Allah to forgive you. So today, there shall be no fear for you and there shall be nothing for you to be sad about you know sadness will not be yours depression will not be yours uneasiness will not be yours because allah is saying to you hmm? yeah. this is the reward of spending time you know in ramadan we 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 have our sahur and then we we sit there we're feeling sleepy you know dozing and waking up and saying no i'm not going to sleep i'm going to wait for fajr because in the quran al-fajr it is being witnessed it is being witnessed and these angels will bear witness you know for you in the presence of allah that yes we were there when he or she was doing this so we achieve this we achieve salat multiplied in Ramadan. We achieve nawafil, our nawafil turned to fraud. And you know that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam understand that the first thing that Allah will look at in all our deeds on the day of Qiyamah is salat. The first thing you have is salat. You are Qiyamah. The first thing that Allah will look at in everything that we did in this world is salat. If it is correct, they will do the calculation for you, and we can, you know, has not of Qabla and to have, you know, uh, that we should yani, do our own math. You can start doing your, your math to know where you are as far as your salad is concerned. You can only guess how much you also have said, right? Because we know right now I'm six years over, over 60 years, right? So let's say Allah is giving me my first 10 years as my years of childhood. He is not going to ask me about my salat for, the, for my first 10 years. But for 50 years, they're going to say, oh yeah, 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 calculate. How many salat should you have done? Every day you're supposed to do five. In a year, you're supposed to do five times 365 days. And 365 days times 50 years. So you ought to have... Somebody do the math for me and please let us know how much that I also have done by now. So if Allah should take my life now, it's probably, that is the math that is probably going to be done. But guess what? This is also going to look at the solat, the fard that I did in the month of Ramadan. Every fard that is multiplied by seven, by 70, subhanAllah. And all my nawafil that is turned into fard, everything is going to be added up. And then if I am fortunate to have witnessed like Lato Qadir, that one night of Ibadah is better than 83 years and four months of Ibadah. So my salat will, for that one night will be times 83 years and four months. I have all that in my coffers. MashaAllah, if we achieve this in Ramadan, then barakallah feena. I, uh, I will say congratulations to all of us. I will say congratulations to all of us. Alhamdulillah, and I pray that we achieve even much more than that. Because, you know, looking at our intention, looking at our hearts, looking at our commitments, Allah may decide to give us much more. So, 
we achieved the establishing of our prayer, you know, of, of our salat in, 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 in the month of Ramadan. We try as much as possible to observe our salat at the right time. You know, at least at this time of um, social distancing and stay home to stay safe, we all have no choice but to observe our salat at the right time. The Prophet ﷺ was asked once by one of the Sahaba, you know, about the most meritorious um, act of ibadah, and he said, "A salat ala waktiha," observing salat at its right time. So, if we achieve that, inshallah, in the past Ramadan. Then Mabruk Alina, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. We thank Almighty Allah for that. What else did we achieve in the month of Ramadan? We achieved Tahajjud, keeping vigil at night. We slept very little at night because we answer to the call of Allah when He says, Wa minna layli fatahajjabihina filatan laka asa an yabathaka rabbuka maqama mahmuda. And from part of the night, pray it as additional worship for you. It is expected that your Lord will resurrect you to a praised station. Yani, whatever greatness and goodness you want to achieve in this world and the year after, the way to get it, the easiest way to get it, is to make the hajjud. This is the promise of Allah. Say, from part of the night, pray with it as additional worship, extra worship, the tawwur that I talked about, extra worship for you. It is expected that your Lord will resurrect you to a praised station. Maqamun Mahmuda. Allah will grant you Maqamun Mahmuda. A station that you will forever be grateful for. A station that Allah himself is saying to you, good job, well done. And the angels are congratulating you. And you are looking at it and you are asking, yeah, Allah, what did I do to deserve all this? It is because you denied yourself the pleasure of sleeping at night. When all else are, are asleep, you wake up, you put the water of wudu on yourself to put out the fire of shaitan, and, you know, just to spend time with Allah. You know, and when you are at it, you're saying, Allah says, Kul This is what Allah is asking us. He said, when you are at it, when you're making your, your tahajjud, say, Kul. And say, my Lord, cause me to enter a sound entrance and to exit a sound exit and grant me from yourself a supporting authority. Are you talking about your job? And someone is, is witch haunting you and you're not being promoted. You're talking about your business. You want it to grow and it is not growing. You're talking about your children. Maybe they're not listening to you and you want them to listen. You're talking about your spouse that is not being kind to you and you want him to love you and be more kind to you. This is it. Do your tahajjud and tell Allah, say to Allah, Rabbi. Give me supporting authority wherever I am, in my home, at my work, in my business, my children, everything that you have granted me, Ya Allah, give me supporting authority. Don't leave me alone to deal with my situation. Help me, Ya Allah. Allah says, and the Prophet said, Tahajjud is like shooting an arrow at a target that never misses. You shoot an arrow at a target and you never miss your target. That is tahajjud for you. you. You will not stay up at night to connect with Allah. And Allah will turn his back on you. No, he is not like that. Our Lord is not like that. He is ever forgiving, most merciful. He is merciful to all and sundry in this world. Even those who do not believe in him, he is merciful unto, unto them. How much more? <clears throat> those of us that believe in him, not only do we believe in him, we, we trust him entirely, totally. When we wake up in the night and we pray to him, we go back to sleep contented that we have put our, we have entrusted our affairs into the most capable hands. He said to the Prophet Sallallahu in a surah to uh, Muzammil, Ya ayyuhal Muzammil, kumi layla illa qulila. Oh, you who wraps himself in clothing, wake up, arise to pray the night, except for a little, half of it, or subtract from it a little. And the Prophet told us, the last third part 
of the night is the best time to connect with Allah, to ask for, for all you need. Because that is the time when Allah himself, in his grace, in his, in his mightiness, in his greatness, he comes down to the lowest heaven, to the Sama Dunya, and he's announcing. In Yoruba, we call him Akirishori. He is announcing to everybody. He is calling on everybody. Who needs my help? Let him ask for my help so I can give him. Who needs my forgiveness? Let him rise and, and ask so I can forgive him. Or who needs my guidance? Let him ask so I can guide him. So the key word is wake up, arise, and shine. Wake up, arise, and ask. And believe it that when you ask, you shall be given. Didn't Allah say, say to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the Quran, When they ask you, O oh Muhammad, where is Allah? Will Allah answer our prayers? When we call on him, how do we call on him for him to answer our, our prayers? How can we reach him? He said, and tell them I am ever so close to them. I answer the call of the caller whenever, not if, whenever he calls me. Whenever we call on him, he says he will answer our call. Fal yester jibuli. Or tell them to answer my call too. Every night Allah comes down to the lowest heaven calling on us. Let us rise and shine. Let us wake up for tahajjud and answer the call of Allah. And he may, he's promising that he will answer us. Let them answer my call. Well, you, me, no, be. And then let, let them trust in me. Let them believe that I will do it, that I am able and capable of doing it. I did it before they were born. I did it when they were in their mother's womb. I did it the day they came to the world. When some People could be saying, no, this child will not come to the world. But I commanded that that child should be born. And that child should remain a great person, you know, steadfast in this deen. Even when Shaitan said it will not happen, I said, yes, it will happen. And here we are. So let us call on him and let us answer his call and trust that he will do it. Put our entire trust in him. Have faith in him. La Allahum yarshudu. So I can guide them. I can show them the way out of the situation they so much want to get out of. La Allahum yarshudu. So I can guide them to the right path. I can guide them from out of the darkness into the light. Eternal light of Allah. That is what we, we stand to achieve if we are able to wake up in the night for tahajjud. Allah said, continue to tell us about making tahajjud, night vigil. See, you make, even if it is two raka, right? In your raka, you must recite the Quran. You will recite the Fatiha and any, uh, any other surah that you know. When you are done, you can sit down and make zikr or even pick up the Quran and still read. Inna Indeed, it will cast upon you a heavy word. That is the Quran. Indeed, the hours of the night are more effective for concurrence of heart and tongue. Putting your heart and tongue together to express what you're feeling and your needs to Allah. The night is the best time for, and more suitable for words, for putting the right words. It will just keep flowing. And tears will, will flow down your, your eyes, you know, down your cheeks. And you will have that connection with, with, with Allah like no other. Right? And then by the time you are done, if you were depressed or angry, you're having anger issues, something is irritating you, something is making you angry, something is making you miserable. By the time you are done with your tahajj, by the special grace of Allah upon us, your heart will be lightened. Your body, you will feel like the, the solution is already here. And it is here, even if you cannot see it physically. You will not spend the night with Allah, connected with Allah, communing with Allah. And, and Allah will leave you to go out of it without your prayer being answered. And you know, Allah answers our prayers in so many different ways. We may be asking for A, and that aim may not be good for us. And Allah knows it's not good for us. So because he loves us so much, he's not going to give us what is not good for us. 
So you are praying and praying and expecting that particular thing that you're asking for to manifest. But Allah is giving you something else that is much more beneficial to you. You know, he said in the Quran, Sometimes you love something and you're craving it and you're praying for it and it's not good for you. And sometimes you hate something so much, you don't even want to touch it with a 10 feet pole. And yet that is the best thing for you. Allah knows and you do not know. So when we reach out to Allah like that, we cry out to him. If what we are asking for is not good for us. Yeah, Allah, I'm asking you by the goodness of this hour, of this moment that we're gathered together, me and my sisters and brothers, that please, if what we are asking for is not good for us, take it away from us, Ya Allah, and replace it with that which is better for us, that would benefit us in this world and in, the, in, in this dunya and in the hereafter, and in, in the akhirah. And that is what Allah does. If it's not good for us, it's not going to give it to us. No matter how much we cry out of love for us, out of his compassion for us, out of his favor upon us, he will give us something that is better. So when we're asking for something, let us not only be on the lookout for, for what we're asking for, but also on the lookout for what is coming to us without us asking for it. That is probably the answer to our dua. That is what Allah is giving us in place of what we're asking for. Or he could, he could just delay it if the time we're asking for it is not good. Like he delayed the, 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 the treasure of, of the children in, that he gave us their news in, um, uh, in Surah Al-Kaf. You know, th th those two orphans, they were orphans and little children, but their father buried treasures for them under the wall in a city where when Sayyidina Khidr, and Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu salam, when they got there, they were hungry and thirsty, and the people were partying, they were eating and dining, dining, you know, and drinking. And they asked for water, they asked for food, they didn't give them. They shooed them away. And then they saw a wall in that same town about to crumble. And you say, Nahida said, yalla, yalla, let's mend this wall, it's kind of age. Ah, in a place where they've been so mean to us, Prophet Musa said, at least let us ask for wages for what we have done. So you don't know, I, we, I, I told you, don't ask me until I explain to you what is going on. And anyway, this is the parting point between you and me. I don't want to go into that because, you know, it will take some time. But, you know, Sina he, he, now explained to Sina Musa, Allah is delaying the reveal of this treasure that belongs to these kids because the time is not right. So Allah may delay our treasure. He may keep it a little bit longer because the time we're asking for it is not the right time for it. If it comes now, it may be harmful to us. So he will delay it and give it to us when the time is right. So at our tahajjud, we ask Allah and let us have the, 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 the confidence that Allah has heard us and he's answering us. He made a promise that I will answer you and I will show you the way out of your situation. I will increase you in all that is good, the goodness and greatness of this world and that of the year after, if that is what you're asking for. And I will give you that which is good for you. Indeed, the hours of the night are more effective. Let us always remember this for concurrence of heart and tongue and more suitable for words. So what else do we, did we achieve in Ramadan? We achieved making dhikr of Allah, devotion to Allah day and night. As Allah said, continue to say in Surah to Muzammin, inna laka fin nahari sabahan tawila, wa dhkuri isma rabbika wa tabatta lilayhi tabtila, rabbul mashriq wal maghrib la ilaha illahu, faktakhidhu wakila. Indeed, for you by day and prolong, for you by day is prolonged occupation. You spend your day seeking means of livelihood, right? You go out to work and everything. But, and remember the name of your Lord and devote yourself to him with complete devotion. In spite of that, make sure you still devote yourself to him. But at night, at night, that short period of night, take a part of it and connect with your Lord and remember his name. Remember him by his name, by his qualities. Ask him by his, by, his, by his qualities. You need risk, call, call upon the Ar-Razak. 
you need the richness of this world and that of the hereafter, richness of the soul and richness of, of, of material, everything, richness of everything, call upon al Ghani. You need his mercy, call upon al Rahman, al Rahim. You need knowledge, call upon the Alim, al Alim. Whatever you need, you have all the qualities of Allah. Use them to call on him and ask for what you need. And he is Rabbul Mashriq wal Maghrib, la ilaha illa hu fattakhidhu wakila. He is the Lord of the East and the Lord of the West. And when he says Lord of the East and the West, he includes the North and the South as well. He is the Lord of, he is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. There is, there is no deity except him. There is no God except him. So take him as disposer of your affairs. Take him as the one that will take care of all your affairs. Just hand all your affairs over to him. And inshallah, he will answer our prayer. So, now, what else did we achieve in Ramadan? We achieved the sweet result of tahajjud. Waquja al haqqu wa zahaq al batil in al batil akana zahuq. Abu Hanifa can bear me witness to this. This is what our brothers chanted in the days of, you know, cultism in, in their college. They chanted, Wakul ja al haq wa zahaq al batil. You, after they perform the hajjud, right? They come out and chant this because they know they have handed their affairs onto the, the, the most capable hands. And this is what you should say when you wake up in the morning. Ja al haq wa zahaq al batil. In al batil la kana zahuqa. If anybody, starting with the greatest enemy of all of us, shaitan, if they try anything, just let them know that Ja al haq wa zahaq al batil. In al batil la kana zahuqa. The truth has come and falsehood has disappeared. Where we are, indeed, falsehood by nature ever bound to depart it is bound to perish you know just like a um, pharaoh and her man were Karun, and the likes of them just as they perished when the truth came when allah came rabbul haq when he came with the truth with his power with his supporting strength falsehood by nature is ever bound to depart وَنُنَّزِّلْ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا Allah said, we send down of the Qur'an that you recite in your tahajjud, that you recite during the days and the nights of Ramadan. We send down of the Qur'an that which is healing and mercy for the believers. You have the Qur'an, you have the healing. Whatever you're going through, may you, you know, be rest assured that the healing is in the Quran. For the believers, and the mercy of Allah is for you, the believers. But it does not increase the wrongdoers except in loss. So whoever thinks, you know, if somebody, you know, the, I, I, I don't want to deviate, but I would have told you a story of, of, of one of our sisters who one um, father, you know, quote and unquote, one person that called himself a father that, you know, thinks he knows the Quran inside out and he has nakali, he said he wanted to sleep with this sister of ours. And this, she said, you cannot do that because it is not right. And he said, he said, I will show you that I am a father. And you know what the sister did? She went into sujood for Allah. And when she's done with the nawafir, she said to Allah, you made this promise. You said, Whoever is a wrongdoer and wants to use the Quran because he knows the Quran or because he has some kind of nokali or whatever, you said he, you, his own will not be but loss upon loss. Yeah, Allah, don't give the person power over me because he's inviting me to that which is wrong. And I don't want to do that which is wrong because I fear you, Allah, because I love you, Allah. You said it is wrong for me to do it and I'm not doing it. So save me and protect me. And guess what happened? The sister slept and she had a dream. 
And in the dream, this uh, far, quote unquote, was chasing her with a cutlass, chasing her in her dream. And she ran in a place that looked like a maze, you know, from one um, entry to another, and until she got to a place where there was no longer exit. And she had her back against the wall in her dream. And the man came with the cutlass and chop off her head. But as he's chopping off her head, another hair, head was growing. Yeah. Another head was growing. He will cut it off, another one was growing. And th whenever the head grows, he will say, you have no power over me because Allah created me and not you. Till she woke up, wallahi, wallahi. And from that day, she never came across that man again. Whatever happened to him, Allah alam. But this, you know, this is Allah. This, he, he promises and he never fails it in his promise. When we, when we use the Quran, let us make sure we are on the right. Let us make sure we do what Allah wants us to do. And let us use that to pray. Yeah, Allah, I am doing only that which you want me to do, only which you approve for me to do. And I am running away from what you disapprove, you and your prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So save me and help me. Wala yazidu dhulimina illa khasara. So, from part of the sweet result of tahajjud, we hear this message from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, alaykum bi qiyam al-layl. Alaykum bi qiyam al-layl. Fa innahu sunnatu, sunnatu salihina qablikum. Fa inna qiyam al-layl Qurbatun ilallahi azza wa jalla wa takfirun li dhunum. Upon you is rising for prayer at night. It is a duty upon you. You cannot sleep at night because shaitan is not sleeping, man. Your enemies are not sleeping. It is at night that those enemies, that they wake up and do you know, those incantations and the tying of knots and everything, they do it in the night under the coverings of the, the, the shade of the night. That is when they go out and put whatever they put on the street. That is when, when, whenever they wake up and do whatever evil they want to do. They do a lot of evil in the night. So, the Prophet ﷺ is commanding, he said, upon you is rising for prayer at night, as this is the sunnah of the righteous ones before you. This is their sunnah, the sunnah of the, of, of Nabiyina, was Siddiqina, was Shuhada, was Salihin. When we read our, uh, Surah Al Fatiha, we said, Ihdina Surah Al Mustaqim, Surah Al Ladina and Amta Alehim, Ghayr al Maghdub Alehim wa Laddali. Guide us onto the straight path, the path of those whom you have favored. Who are they? An Nabiyina, was Siddiqina, was Shuhada, was Salihin. Those are the people, the, the people on the right path. This is their sunnah. If you want to be like them, if you want Allah to guide them to their path, then upon you is rising for prayer at night. You cannot spend your whole night sleeping. My brothers, my sisters, we have so much going on around us. We have so much, so much hate, so much injustice, so much evil being perpetrated. And we are the ones that with our prayer, we can save the world, not only ourselves. We can save the ummah with our prayers. But it is most effectively done at night. We cannot sleep all night. We cannot spend all our nights sleeping. Wallahi, my sisters and brothers, if, even if it is only two rakats, sunnah, let us make it compulsory upon ourselves. I must wake up every night to pray, even if it is only two rakat. And when I'm done with the two rakat, I do one water. Even if it is one raka, whatever, I will do it so that I can have Allah with me. I can connect with him. I can continue to enjoy his grace, his favor, his protection, his guidance. It is the sunnah of the righteous ones before you. Before the coming of Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, this had been the sunnah of all the prophets of Allah. And we want to be like them? We better do like them. It is a way of coming close to Allah Azza wa Jalla. We want to enjoy the nearness, the close, closeness to Allah. We have to wake up at night. And that is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the, 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 the Sahur has a lot of barakah in it. 
It is not just because some people will say, uh, you know, uh, I can't wake up at night for, the, I, I don't feel like eating. Don't eat. Just sip, even a sip of water, but make sure you do tahajjud. It's because of the tahajjud. The fact that you're able to connect with Allah and take advantage of the presence of Allah at that time. And have your prayers answered and have your fears allayed by the special grace of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And it is a way of getting all things forgiven by the one that gives blessings after forgiveness, turning sins to good deeds. You know that we all have two angels on our shoulders, right? The one on the right records everything that is good that we think, we say, or do. The one on our, show, on our left shoulder, however, he only records that bad thing that we do. When we think of doing something bad, it is not written down. But when we think of doing something good, it is written down and rewarded. We're given reward for even thinking of doing something good. Now, the angel on the left will not write anything on bad until we have done it. And even before writing it, we'll wait for some time to see whether we'll have a change of heart. We'll, ask, we'll quickly go back to Allah and ask for forgiveness. And once we do that, we go quickly go back to Allah and ask for forgiveness. Allah will say, what you wrote down, you angel on the left, erase it because it is written with pencil. Yes, the pencil that our uh, kindergarten children use with huge eraser that erases quickly, right? And so erase it and you on the right, write it down in, in his book of record, in his book of good records, you know, good deeds that he has done something good. He did, he committed a sin and he repented. Or he thought of doing it and he didn't do it. He, thought, he did not do it out of fear of Allah, out of love for Allah. So write it down in his book of good deeds that he has done something good and give the reward for it. So it's a way of getting all our sins forgiven by the, the most merciful one that gives blessings after forgiveness. He blesses us after he forgives us. He turns our sins into good deeds and gives us reward for it. MashaAllah, subhanAllah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So, and it says, Allah says, وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَوْشِعِينَ Sweet result of patience. In Ramadan, the month, Shahru Sabur, that is what the Prophet ﷺ, one of the names he gave Ramadan, Shahru Sabur, the month of patience. Allah says, and seek help through patience and prayer. And indeed, it is difficult except for the humbly submissive to Allah. Patiently experience hunger. This is what we did in, in Ramadan. We patiently, with patience, we experience hunger. We experience thirst. We experience self-denial of halal intimacy with our spouses. And we experience, you know, self-denial of other pleasures of life. We cannot watch TV as usual. We cannot listen to music as usual. We cannot do this. We cannot do this. We cannot hang out with bad people as usual, with bad friends, bad influence. We stay away from them just for the sake of Allah, you know. We learn to be patient, to patiently connect with Allah. We want the best of the month. We want, we want this Ramadan to be the best, you know, better than the last one, right? And so we deny ourselves a lot of things just so that Allah will look upon us with mercy and accept our fasting, our going hungry and, and thirsty and everything and reward us for it because he said as so muli wa anajzibi the fasting is for me and i am the only one that he will give the reward for it assalamu alaikum warahmatullah so we learn to be patient we learn to be patient in our worship in our ibadah we learn to be patient, you know, in our salat. We learn to make the best of our salat. I mean, we pray in Ramadan like never before. Like, you know, we, 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 with such iman, with such iman. And ihtisaban, you know, faithfully and hoping to reward it bountifully for whatever we did in Ramadan. Right? And, you know, if we go back to the beginning of this lecture, the reason why we're fasting is because 
the, the only reason why we're fasting is because Allah says, hmm? كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ السِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you will achieve what? Taqwa. So this is what we, 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 we hope to achieve. You know, when we, when we fast, when we pray, we learn to do it very well. Some of us, when it comes to salat, ah, hey, you know express, express salat, drive through salat. Allah, 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 Allah. Before you know it, the salat is done. But in Ramadan, we learn to do it very, very well. Because we don't want to lose. I mean, if I do one for I'm giving 70 rewards. So we try to do it and do it well. May Almighty Allah accept all our efforts in the past Ramadan and grant us the, uh, the grace to witness many more to come. So the sweet result of, of patience was saying to be sober was salat. It is, it is difficult for a lot of people to do this, except for those who humbly sub, are submissive to Allah Azza wa Jalla. You know, another thing we, 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 we achieve is we trained our children by example to be patient. They see us, they see us doing it. They see us doing it, so they, 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 they you know, and we are their role models. They, our children, they love us and they, they love to copy us. So they learn from us to accept no for an answer. We, we train them to, to accept no for an answer. Mommy, I'm, I'm hungry. You know, this is our child. I woke up for Sahur. And by the time it's 12, 1, 2 p.m., I'm hungry, mommy. I want to break my fast. We say, oh, please, my dear, be patient. Be patient. It's almost over. And then gradually we push it to five o'clock, to seven o'clock. Ah, the time is almost here. It's almost here. And you know, daddy is going to give you so much. Mom is going to give you so much. You know, we encourage them. And they learn to accept no for an answer. So when Ramadan is over, when we say, no, my dear, we cannot, we, I cannot give you this now. They remember that no in Ramadan, that it is in their best interest. They, we, we achieve training our children to understand and develop empathy for the less privileged. Our children get to understand, why are we going hungry, mommy? Daddy, why are we going hungry you know, throughout the day? Why are we not eating? So that we have a feeling of what that homeless father and mother and their children, what they are feeling. They don't even know where dinner is coming from. But well, we're going to have dinner very soon. When, once you hear the Adhan for Maghrib, we're going to have, but there are people out there who don't even have dinner, who are not promised dinner, let alone next breakfast. Our children get to understand that. And so when we give something to them, we give them some money, give to the, to the poor and the needy. They can connect with it. They can understand it. This is how they are hungry. I'm glad to be part of their life. I'm, I'm glad to put food on their table. We teach our children to be contented with and grateful for whatever they have at a particular time. Whatever we give them for sahur, no matter how small, and whatever they get for iftar, no matter how small, they are pleased, they are grateful, they are contented with it. And we are able through Ramadan to teach our children to understand that no condition is permanent. In the Malo Siri Yusra, as we're experiencing the difficulty, as we're experiencing the hardship of thirst and hunger, they, they get to understand that there comes ease and joy of iftar. With the hardship and hunger of thirst, there will come the ease and joy of iftar. If we're able to impact this on our children, walillahi alhamd. Now, this is where the story all started from. No. Our beginning, our beginning. When Allah created our father. So bring it. 
Can okay. we please keep the children quiet, please? Yeah. When Allah created our father, Prophet Adam alayhi salatu salam, and Allah commanded the angels to bow down to him, including Iblis, who was a jinn. He was not an angel. He's not the fallen angel or whatever. He was, he was a jinn that Allah rewarded by elevating him and allowing him to, to travel through all the seven heavens and come to the presence of Allah. With the angels, where he was dwelling, he was living amongst the angels. And then Allah said he was going to create someone that is going to give successive authority to he and his children of the earth, which he wanted for himself and his children. But Allah now created Adam and asked the angels, including him in bliss, to bow down to him. Iblis, Iblis refused. All the angels bowed down to our father Adam. And Iblis refused. And Allah asked him, why did you refuse? He said, because I'm better than him. You created me from fire. Uh, and you created him from dirt. And Allah said, he's cursed for being disobedient to Allah in the presence of all the angels. This is not the place for you to be disrespectful and disobedient to Allah. So go back. You, from today, you are the lowest of the low. I said, okay, just give me time. Time. Till the day they are resurrected. Allah said, okay, I give you time. And he said, <laughs> he made that vow that made Allah to call him our avowed enemy. Iblis said, my Lord, because you have put me in error, I will surely make disobedience attractive to them on earth. And I will mislead them. I will mislead them all. He's talking about us from our father to the very last of us. He said, because Allah had put him in error, he's blaming Allah for his own disrespect, for his own disobedience. He's blaming Allah. Instead of looking at himself and you know, blaming himself for being the one in error and ask for forgiveness, he put it on Allah. He said, because you have put me in error, I will surely make disobedience attractive to them on earth. Check it out, people. Disobedience is, is, is a great business. It is great business. Attracting people to disobedience is great business. It, it is the most flourishing business in the world today. Think about it. From clothing industry, to food industry, to drink industry, to health industry, to even to education, to social media, everything in life today, what is flourishing, what is selling, is anything that attracts to disobedience or makes disobedience of Allah attractive. That is what is selling. That is where the world is going. And you know, we, the Prophet said, Islam came as gharib, was a yaoud gharib. That Islam came as something strange, and it will go back as something strange. Where in that time, when a lot of people look at Islam as being strange, but still, as bad as the situation is, people are looking at us and they're learning from us, and their heart is connecting with Allah through what they see in us, in some of us. So many people amongst us, Muslims, are so bad that if the, the, those that, the non-Muslims that are coming to Islam, if they had met them before they met the Quran, they probably would not have embraced Islam. But, you know, curiosity from what the, 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 the treatments that we're receiving, it, 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 it's, the curiosity drives them to reaching out for the Quran and to learning about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they get to know the truth about Islam and what we Muslims should be. So he said, I will make disobedience attractive to them on earth and I will mislead them all. Illa ibadaka minhumul mukhlasin, Except among them, your chosen servants. Mukhlasin, except from among them, your chosen servants who are completely dedicated to you, committed to you, loyal to you 100%. 
except for them. For others, I'm going to drive them, mislead them, make disobedience attractive to them. Allah said, this is a path of return to me that is straight. And indeed, my servants, no authority will you have over them except those who follow you of the deviators. He himself, Shaitan said, except for those of your servants who are, you know, who are committed to you, you, you know, your chosen servants, those who will go out of their way to connect with you. And Allah says, indeed, my servants, no authority, my true devotees, no authority will you have over them, except those who follow you of the deviators. And indeed, hell is the promised place for them all. You and them all, Shaitan. And this is explaining what the hell looks like. It has seven gates. For every gate is of them a portion designated. Indeed, the righteous will be within gardens and springs, having been told, enter it in peace, safe and secure. Enter into paradise, safe, protected, and happy, you know, in peace and with, with peace of mind, with peace of everything, and into safety. And we will remove whatever is in their breast of resentment. So they will be brothers on thrones facing each other. And sisters, who will be sisters unto each other? You know, even the co-wives, the co-wives, I'm talking to you, my sisters, there are co-wives. In Aljana, you will not have any resentment in your heart you know, towards your co-wife. You will love them and they will love you. Ah, Elijah is finding me difficult to enter. <laughs> Salam alaikum ya Elijah. We have been admitting people. Huh? If Elijah can be a bit patient, she will enter. Yeah, the honey, they said they, would, they, are, they are admitting people into the, into the uh, conference. They will soon admit you. Please be patient. One of the one my love you in, inshallah. All right. Yeah. So, and we will remove whatever is in the breast. Yes, please. Time is uh, of the essence as usual, ma'am. And um, we want to ask if it's possible for you to wrap up in the next 10 minutes. We have gone double the time. Inshallah. Mashallah. Inshallah, Thank we'll do that. Inshallah, inshallah, we'll do that. So, and Allah says, no fatigue will touch them therein, nor from it will they ever be removed. Inshallah, may we all make al Jannah, and we will be there forever. And O Muhammad, inform my servants that it is I who I am the forgiving, the merciful. So we are promised the forgiveness of Allah. We are promised the mercy of Allah. We are promised the goodness and the greatness of this world and that of the hereafter, you know, for all that we have achieved in the month of Ramadan, you know. And um, I will just round up, you know, by inviting us to, you know, um, achieve tawakul, to strive to achieve tawakul, you know, um, to achieve, um, The, the, not through tawakul and through so many other things, the the nearness to Allah Azza wa Jalla, to achieve being the friend of Allah, being the one that Allah will call His friend, to become one of the awliya illah. You know, with all that we have achieved in Ramadan, we we need to do something that will help us keep it forever. If we are able to keep it forever then we will remain the friend of Allah forever. You know that we all know that in the month of Ramadan, shaitan was chained up, right? He was he, the, 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 the doors to heaven, the doors to Jannah was open. 
and the doors to hell was closed. And the, the devils were chained, were put down, were locked down in chains, right? But from the day of Eid, they have been let loose. But guess what? Allah took, unlocked the chain, but he handed it over to us. He did not just let Shaitan loose and the Shayatin loose. He handed the chain of control over to us. So that we have learned, we have gathered enough energy, enough good deeds, enough work in Ramadan to enable us to control Shaitan and not the other way around. The chain is in our hands, in our hands. Shaitan will come whispering to our chest. Hmm? The one that whispers to the chest of people, not the heart of people. Our heart is inside our chest. Our chest is protecting our heart. And our, the target of shaitan is our heart. And shaitan cannot gain entrance into our heart unless we open the gate or the door of our heart into it. And it is by letting go of the control, the chain, or the chain that Allah used to, to lock down Shaitan in Ramadan. Shaitan is still locked down, but the chain is in our hands. The control is in our hands. Are we gonna let Shaitan whisper to us and say, please, you know, let me let me relieve you of that burden of let me hold the chain for you? Once you let that happen, then it's gonna come knocking on the door to your heart and once you open the door to your heart it's going to come into your heart and you know mess it up and i pray that allah will not allow that to happen we did all we did in ramadan so that that will never happen again so that we will not go down the wrong route again so that we will not be controlled by shaitan again we will not let anger or any emotion get the, be the better part of us when that will lead us to doing what is wrong, will lead us to disobedience of Allah. We have the control over our heart. We have the control, we have the power to say no to shaitan. It is simple. Whenever the whispering comes, whenever the, the, the temptation comes, all we need to do and say sincerely from the heart, is Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. Auzu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. And go and make wudu. And with the water of wudu, put out the fire of Shaitan. And then do to Raka Nafila, even if it is not the time for Salat. And talk to Allah. Ya Allah, you promised to always be with me. You said you will come, you will answer my call whenever I call you. I need you right now, Ya Allah. Take this temptation away from me. Ya Allah, empower me. Give me strength to say no. Help me to turn to you and to you only. And help me, give me the strength to turn away from shaitan and his wrongdoings. And I pray that Allah will always come to our aid whenever we are at our you know, low times. Mm -hmm. And you know, the low time starts from the day of Eid. <laughs> suddenly you find out that you're not saying your prayers at the right time anymore. Suddenly you find out that you feel too tired to pick up the Quran and read again. Suddenly you find out that you cannot even make the dhikr as you were doing before. No problem. Don't beat yourself up because of that. Just go make wudu. Put out the fire of shaitan and turn to Allah. Ya Allah, help me. Here I am again. You are the strong one. We are the weak ones, Ya Allah. Strengthen us, Ya Allah. Help me. I, can't, I cannot handle this situation myself. Help me, Ya Allah, overcome this situation. Let us keep remembering that, reminding ourselves of that, that Allah is ever close to us. Allah is not moving away from us. He's always there for us. He's always waiting to embrace us and to help us. He said, if you come to me walking, I will come to you running. 
If you come to me with this, you know, this, the span of, of, of your hand, I will come to you with the span of my arm. I will envelope you with my, with my embrace, my warm embrace, my protective em embrace. Allahu waliyu ladhina amanu yukhrijuhu min al-dhulumati illa nur Allah is the protecting friend. That's what he calls himself in the Quran. I'm not making this up. Allahu waliyu, waliyu, protecting friend. Allahu waliyu ladhina amanu yukhrijuhu min al-dhulumati illa nur He removes them from darkness of shaitan into his light of glory. That is the promise of Allah. Wallahu la yukhlifu al-mi'ana. ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتوب علينا يا مولانا انك انت التواب الرحيم واهدنا وفقنا الى الحق والى طريق المستقيم ربي اوزعني ان اشكر نعمتك التي انعمت علي وعلى والدي وان اعمل صالحا ترضاه واصلح لي في ذريتي واصلح لي في ذريتي واصلح لي في ذريتي اني توبت اليك واني من المسلمين ربي اوزعني ان اشكر نعمتك التي انعمت علي وعلى والدي وأن أعمل صالحا ترضاه ودخلني برحمتك في ذلك الصالح ربي جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربي جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربي جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا أتيتنا من الملك وعلمتنا من تأويل الأحديث فاطر السماوات والأرض أنت ولينا في الدنيا والآخرة توفنا مسلمين والحكمة بالصالح توفنا مسلمين والحكمة بالصالح توفنا مسلمين والحكمة بالصالح في طاعة الله في طاعة الله في طاعة الله في طاعة رسول الله اللهم أرزقنا بالقول لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت ونستغفرك ونتوب إليك سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون وسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته التكبير الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر uh, Adia, you have been marvelous you had 30 minutes you taken an hour and we just didn't want you to stop um, I will hand over to you after just a brief summary I can't do justice to the lecture you have done other than just for me to remind the people in, sh in, in 10 seconds what you have taught us in an hour it is that we must value the Ramadan we have just performed. That's what we have just done is we have gained closeness to Allah with multiple salat, with fasting, with Quran recitation, with tahajjud, with dhikri, with patience, and all of these we have done it to the best of our abilities. So we must rest assured that Allah is going to accept them from us. And what have we gained after doing all of this? We have gained the position of the mutakun, the one who became righteous. We have tried to become righteous. We have tried to become the friend of Allah. We have gained the control over shaitan and over our life. And that, that, which we, that which we have gained in terms of control, we must protect it. We must not let it go. Protect your heart that is now controlled. Protect your soul that is now patient. Protect your closeness to Allah. Strengthen yourself by being by worshiping Allah and being closer to Allah. And what have we been promised? You have reminded us that we have been promised forgiveness if you continue to strive. We have been promised the mercy of Allah and we have been promised Jannatul Firidaus. That is the conclusion I can just sum up from the beautiful lecture you have given us. Barakallah fi, barakallah fi. And I thank Salam Sister for bringing you to us. I've always been amazed with idea <laughs> over 30 years, over 40 years, and you are still doing wonders. Barakalafi. Assalamu alaikum. Let me hand over to Adia uh, Amina, who will take us through the question and answer. MashaAllah. Jazakallah khairin, brother. Shamsadimi, you are so excellently captured and so well said. Our big sister is a treasure. We need look no further. I'm always so very inspired 
when I hear a sister, you know, speak to the faith and move you and, and, and stick to the things that matter. And Brother Shams is right. It was one hour, but it was one hour well spent. I, I had a heavy tongue to say, uh, our big sister, can you take 10 more minutes? Because I was conflicted. May, may Allah increase in knowledge, our big sister. May Allah increase in Hikima. Thank you so very much. Um, Salaamu Alaikum one more time, distinguished sisters and brothers. The floor is open for questions and comments. Um, if you indicate by show of hand, um, we can call you and unmute your mic. You also have the option of um, putting in your question uh, in, the, in the chat box. Um, I think we have a hand already. I can see Fatima Lawal. Um, Fatima, I am going to um, ask you to unmute so you can ask your question as quickly as you can. I uh, remember our ground rules, let's keep it as short and concise as possible so we can take more questions and comments. Over to you, Sister Fatima. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I just um, wanted to say, yeah, I wanted to say a very big thank you to Elijah again. I'm so happy to see her again after so many years. I used to enjoy her programs while growing up in Nigeria on LTV and on MITV then. I'm so, so happy to see you again. May Allah um, preserve you for us. May Allah grant you many more years in service mm -hmm. to Islam. And may Allah grant all your heart desires, bless all your generation, bless us too. So my, uh, my question is that, um, uh, you said Islam came as something strange and will go back as something strange. I need some clarification on that. Does it mean that at some point in this world, we might not be practicing Islam again, or does it mean there will be a time before the judgment day that people will not be practicing Islam again? I'm kind of confused. Can you please clarify that? There's a okay, our big sister, we know. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Many thanks, Sister Fatima. Our big sister, we know the question, and we take a few more questions and uh, and comments. Um, while our keynote speaker was um, sharing, um, as far as I'm concerned, is, is a hutuba really. It, it's more than just a lecture. Um, one of our, uh, our guest uh, participants actually wrote a comment that I wanted you to say something to, um, Alaja. And uh, the person said, um, you're never perfectly safe. No human being on earth is ever safe or was ever safe. And the person then went on to pray for everyone that is on, on, on the call today. To live is to risk your life, your heart, everything. I can hear a deep cry coming from there um, that connects with your lecture today about those things that we should always be afraid of, we should always be concerned about. Um, you said something very profound, uh, dear uh, guest speaker, attracting people to disobedience is big business. It is flourishing business. Tying these two comments together, I would like you to share with us as someone who is our big sister, as someone who lives in the West and who is a Muslim in the West, some of those tips, some of those everyday strategies that work for you, that help you look shaitan in the eye and kick that evil away from you. Those everyday tips are things that I would like to hear from you, my sis. Um, let, me, let me quickly add a quick question also that has come out offline. And, and that is to ask, because you had said earlier that um, if you're fasting and you're a traveler, Allah has made it easy for you, you do not have to fast. And the question is, um, with all of the modern technology and the ease with which we now travel, um, is it haram for a traveler who feels, if he or she feels they can handle it, to go ahead and fast, or uh, is it like the shortening of prayers? Allah has given us this, this, this ease, and we are duty bound to take the ease. Uh, is it in the same category for a traveler um, uh, in terms of shortening the prayer as well as not fasting in the month of Ramadan, or um, is there some exemption there? So, a big sister, you have three, three questions now. We'll return to you and then go back again to harvest some more. Bismillah, ma'am. 
Inshallah. So, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-mustaleen. Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam. Allahumma idina surat al-mustaqeen. Uh, the first question says, Islam came as something strange and will go back as something strange. Remember at the time when Islam came, when Allah, Islam is the first religion in the world ever, you know, by the way. It is the religion of our father Adam, and it is the religion of all the uh, prophets of Allah. But we know that Prophet Muhammad was born in the Arabian Peninsula, right? He was born in Mecca. And at that, as at the time he was born, the, 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 the religion of the people, most people in Mecca at that time was idol worshiping. They were all worshiping idols. And this was a place the, that has the first um, masjid for a, a place of worship. The first house of worship for Allah is the one in Mecca. That is the Kaaba. The first place ever where human beings worshiped Allah on earth. That is our two parents. When they met each other on the plain of Arafah, Allah directed them to the spot where they found the Hajar al-Aswad, which was Hajar al abiyad at that time. It was the white stone. That was the, uh, the souvenir they came with from, from Janatil, uh, the Garden of Eden, the Janatil Adni, where they came from, the, the paradise where Allah, you know, sent them out from. They recognized that stone and the house of worship, the first house of worship was built there. Over the years, the flood happened and everything, they lost it. It was rebuilt by Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and our father Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam, right? But by the time Prophet Muhammad was born, of course, you know, Ibrahim had two sons, Ismail and Ishaq. The chain of, of, of um, messengers were from the, line, the lineage of Ismail, uh, Ishaq, Isaac. He was the one, his, his, his line of his lineage had all the prophets all the way to Jesus in Isa Islam. And then the last, but definitely not the least, is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that came from the line, the lineage of Sayyidina um, uh, Ismail uh, alayhi salatu salam. But before, when Ismail was there, he established the religion of Tawheed. Everybody was, were muwahidun. They were worshippers of one and only Allah. But someone before, you know, about some hundreds of years before Prophet Muhammad was born, someone in that Saudi peninsula, in, in Mecca, actually, who was a very uh, prominent person, highly respected, he was kind and everything was very good and very rich. He traveled to Syria. At that time, Syria was a, a, a place of great, you know, uh, business, trade, and everything. And when he got there, they had high-rise buildings, you know, as at that time, maybe one, two or three-story buildings at the highest. But they didn't have any such things in Mecca. They had tents and, you know, bungalows and everything in Mecca. And then he saw that they had the most formidable army at that time, and then they had the, the, the most flourishing business. And they were so organized, they were so educated, so they seemed to him, but they had idols that they were worshiping. And so he thought this must be the reason why they were, where their business is flourishing. So let me buy one of the idols and take it back to Mecca so that we too will develop and become, you know, civilized like them. So he took one idol back to Mecca. And because he was a respectable man, I can't remember his name now, but I pray if I remember it before the end of the, of the program, I'll tell you the name. He was a very, he was, the, he was a high chief in Mecca at that time. So everybody listened to him. When he brought the idol to them, they embraced it. And then he had a dream where Shaitan told him where the idols of the people of Noah were buried in Jeddah and he directed him there and he went there and he found the idols. Hubal was the greatest of the idols and he brought Hubal back to Mecca. And after Hubal, they have the Allah, the Wal'uzah, and, and by the time Prophet Muhammad was born, 
they have three, over 360 idols around inside and around the Kaaba. So when he came with Islam, 40 years after he was born, and he started saying, no more worship of idols, it was a strange thing to them. And it was not accepted by most. That a man and his slave are equal before Allah, that is, that is, um, unacceptable and unbelievable, the strangest thing they ever heard. That they should respect women, women that they, that they, they use and describe as they like. For, now, for them to now respect them just because they are their mothers and their wives, that was strange to them. And for women not to dance to the pleasure of men and dress and, and go around the cover naked, that was strange to them. That men should cover their chastity and women should cover their, their chastity and respect each other and lower their gaze. These are things that they were unheard of, you know, and it was strange to them. And today, <laughs> Islam is coming, is becoming a strange thing as well. No, now, the second, the second question says, no one is ever safe anywhere. How am I staying, staying safe in America and keeping my Islam intact? How am I able to walk the streets of America with my hijab on? When I was coming to the States, I was so scared. I mean, they scared me. Ah, Elijah, you can't go to America and be doing your dressing like you're dressing, you know, putting on your hijab and everything. You know, uh, the, the Islamophobes, they will attack you. They will do this. When I went to when I went for my interview to get my visa at the American embassy, I had to take a picture, you know, at one of the kiosk around. And the man, the Nigerian man there that was supposed to take my picture was telling me to take off my hijab, that they will not give me, they will not grant me visa, you know, with my hijab on. And I said, listen, leave that to me. Let me deal with that. I am not removing my hijab. You, your, you, your job is to take the picture and I'm paying you for it, so please keep your opinion to yourself. And I took my picture with my hijab on, and I go to the American embassy. I got inside, I gave them the pictures, gave them my passport. They asked me what I was coming to do. I told them, and they said, okay, come back a few days, go to such and such an address they gave me to collect your visa. It's approved. So subhanAllah. So you know, if we present the, 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 the Westerners, unfortunately, you know, we, some of us Muslims are the ones that are, you know, thinking that we will not be accepted the way we are. But, you know, nothing good comes on a platter of gold. What you need, what your freedom, your, 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 the ability to practice your religion and be who you are. You have to make them understand that this is part of you. And they are ready to accept you the way you are. The president of America today will go on air and congratulate Muslims for Ramadan and pray that we have fruitful Ramadan. All the mayors are doing the same thing. They accept us for who we are because we dare to stand out and be different and be strange for Bushma al -Rib. Congratulations to the stranger, the one who dares to be different for the sake of Allah. We're not going out to hurt anybody. We're just being who we are as, come, as dictated by Allah. Our children that dare to wear the hijab and go to school, they are picked upon by their peers, but some of them, they even embrace Islam through our children, through our resilience, through our devotion, through our commitment to who we are, just for the sake of Allah, you know? And safety lies in the hands of Allah, right? When Islam came to Mecca, many people were killed. Many people were, were humiliated. Many people suffered. But those that suffered because, those that suffered because they believe in Allah, like the likes of, of Bilal, they are declared as people of Jannah. When Bilal was, wanted to get married, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam announced, who will marry a man of Jannah? Who will marry?
marry a, mar a man of Jannah. He called him a man of Jannah. He is one of the ten that got their certificate of Jannah because he stood up for Allah and Allah yeah. stood up for him. They tortured him. They humiliated him. They did everything to make him renounce Allah and call Allah Zanuza his Lord. And he kept saying, Ahadun Ahad. He didn't care if he was going to die. Right? So if in the cause of it, we die. Walillahi alhamd. If in the cause of this, you know, <laughs> We die, whether we die now or we die later, we still die. So if we die, believing and standing up for our faith in Allah, Allah will never let us down. Remember the story of the Ashab al in Surah Al-Buruj. One of the children that spoke in the cradle, apart from Jesus Christ, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, was that baby that that woman was carrying when they were about to throw her into the fire, just because he said, La ilaha illallah. Subhanallah. The woman was afraid, not for herself, she was afraid for her baby. She said, please take, have pity on my baby. And the baby said, mommy, don't worry. That fire is Jannah. Jump into it. And she said, everybody, the baby has spoken. Have faith. The fire is Jannah. Whatever we may go through, because we are standing up for Allah, may Allah strengthen us to remain steadfast. Strengthen us to remain steadfast, Ya Allah. Give us the power, the energy, and the support we need to remain steadfast. So that till we breathe our last, we will never say anything except for La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Traveling or fasting, is it haram to, uh, um, to not fast or shorten our prayers? It is not haram. It is a gift of Allah. Allah says he wants ease for us and not difficulty. He said we can shorten our, our salat when we travel. Whether you're traveling by air or you have all the comfort and traveling is traveling. Let us not second guess Allah. He has given us that opportunity. Let us enjoy it and thank him for, for the mercy. The Prophet should we fast, should we fast or not Should we fast or should we not fast? Allah said, Wa intasumu khairun lakum. Wa intasumu, if you fast, in spite of the difficult, if you can fast, then it is better for you. Because there is no other month to fast like Ramadan. Where you get the reward that you get for fasting, like Ramadan. Wa intasumu, he said, if you're traveling and you, if you have any hardship, you can do fidya. You know, ta'amu miskin, you can feed the poor and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he said, well, in, at the end of that ayah, he said, well, in tasumu khayran if, you, if you can fast, then it is better for you. And I want to leave it at that. If you find it comfortable to fast, then please fast. But if it becomes unbearable, then don't fast. Then you pay it back on other days, inshallah ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Wallahu a'lam. Well, let me keep easy. Our big sister. Um, thank you so very much. The time is fast spent. It's almost time for Maghrib in Nigeria. Um, but as is our tradition, we have a tradition of always returning good for good. So you have blessed us. You have given us such um, a rich part of you. The least we can do is also to return this goodness with a word of prayer. And there isn't a better person today, our big sister, to invite to say a word of thanks and a word of prayer, especially for you. But somebody who today typifies who you are, the kind of relationships you have built across decades of, 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 of Islam, of, of sisterhood, of brotherhood, of working together, of livelihood that is halal. And it is therefore an honor to invite. Um, you had the surprise earlier. He's coming back. Brother Abdurrahman Laki, <laughs> Abu Hanifa, to say a word of Abu prayer. Abu Hanifa, mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Abu Hanifa, are you there? Thank you, mashallah. Rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa bihi nasta'in wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, I thank Allah for this opportunity to hear from my dear mother my sister, my mentor, 
my benefactor. Yeah, but Allah has, has uh, given us some benefactors here in this world, really. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you abundantly. I wouldn't know what exactly you want me to do because I'm also overwhelmed. I, I, I'm kind of choked up, really. Uh, it is really, really nostalgic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you abundantly. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, continue to bless you. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to give us the opportunity to be a leading light of Islam. And why we lead Islam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to make Islam to grow in our homes as well. Amen. I've, have, I've had several calls in the recent past of saying, how can we revive light upon light? I said, no problem. Very soon. Inshallah, <laughs> <laughs> we should do. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> This is giving me hope that we will do it. We will record across continents yeah. and bring a single package to the world, inshallah. We will do that, inshallah. We will do that, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you abundantly. Thank you so much, our brother. Thank you so much. We have had over 65 people online today. Um, some dropped off, some came back. We've had excellent comments. Um, people saying Jazakumullah Khairin to our mother and our big sister. Um, Abu Majid, who sent in that great comment about the fact that no one is always safe. Uh, he said again, no thief, however skillful, can rob one of knowledge. And that is why knowledge is the best and safest treasure to acquire. I've been listening to mommy for years and wallahi, I'm still glued. May the almighty Allah bless you and your family, mom. Um, that's so beautiful. And I think he's writing it from California. Mashallah. And so many comments from sisters and brothers online. Uh, thank you so much, my sister. It's an honor at this point to hand over to a sister, a friend, a co-traveler, the founder of Salam Sisters, who, as you know, uh, our big sister has been a part of you. Uh, <laughs> Mashallah. Mashallah. <laughs> Allah has made possible and technology. I would hand over to her um, to uh, introduce our next lecturer and 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 to close this session effectively. Thank you, everyone, for this opportunity. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah her, my darling sister, Dr. Amina Salehu, and mashallah, I feel so overwhelmed um, seeing my big sister here. Um, Haji Akaniyat Akorede, Light Upon Light. And you know, like Abu Anifa said, we should have another Light Upon Light, honestly. It's just that all the children have grown older now. So we need to get all of them back together. And let's, let's have the stories again, mashallah. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. I believe you've been able to take a lot of admonition away from this lecture today. And we thank Allah for making it possible for us. Um, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Inshallah, as you know, this is our um, thought, um, critical thought lecture series. And inshallah, in August, we're going to be bringing another guest speaker who will shortly introduce herself to present you know, another lecture for us on abuse and the effect of it on us. Do we have um, Dr. Rashida Bankole here? to um, briefly tell us what to expect in, in August um, when we're going to be presenting our third series of the crit Critical Thought Lectures. And it's going to be on domestic abuse and your mental health. Bismillah. Sister Rashida, are you here as with us? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Wa alaikum. Wa First, I want to say thank you to Sister Ghania Takurede. I've heard so much about you. Thank you. Thank you for giving us these wonderful lectures. It's, it's nice meeting you today. Um, as my sister has already said, in August, we'll be talking about evidence based on the effect of domestic abuse on our mental health. It is an awareness topic, and we know that domestic abuse has been a topic that almost everybody has been silent about it. I think it's time we, be, we talk about this topic, we talk about it from various continents. What does it mean when it comes to Nigeria? What does it mean when it comes to our dean? And what does it mean when it comes to the Western world? 
I believe evidence have shows that it's a different meaning to everybody. So what we need to do, what, what we're going to be looking into, what are the facts about domestic abuse and what are the myths, what are the things that culturally we miss about domestic abuse. I look forward to see everyone on that day. And please and please try as much as possible. We'll come with various questions. And inshallah, I will do my best to answer it. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, thank you very much. Um, we've, had it, we've had it all. And um, what I would just say in addition to everything is that the only way we can ascertain that our Ramadan has been accepted is if we are able to carry on with the good work we've been doing during Ramadan. So don't relent in your effort. Carry on. Beat shaitan to it. All the time. And let us ask Allah to strengthen us to be able to carry on. Inshallah, um, we look forward to having Dr. Roshida Bankole on in August. But before I end it today, I would not um, end this program without thanking all the people who have worked tirelessly behind the scene. Firstly, I'd like to thank my 10-year-old um, Rauda. She's been amazing. She's, you know, tirelessly ensuring that everything is up to date, checking all the system, you know, updating Salam Sister's website. And don't forget, you get all our updates on Salam Sister's website, www.salamsisters.org. Um, if you, if you're going to get all the updates regarding the next lecture for us. And I would also like to thank my brother, Brother Shams, thank you so much for always being there. Thank you, um, may Allah bless you and reward you for your support. Um, Haji Amina, I can't thank you enough. I'm sure uh, 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 you, 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 you have done so wonderfully well. You could put up with me, calling you every minute to, <laughs> to, to make sure that everything is on, on ground. And you know, I remember all the rehearsals we've done night, afternoon, day, alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin, Allah, keep us together for a long time in love. And thank you, my big sister, um, Ajia Ganea Koride, it's so lovely to see you again. And I pray that Allah will reward you immensely with all the goodness in this world and in the hereafter. Abu Anifa, not forgetting you, thank you for keeping the surprise because I told you don't call Alaja until after this program and you kept it, may Allah reward you for that. Thank you, and I pray that inshallah Allah. we'll be able to do light upon light again together. You know, way back in the 90s, Amen. Amen. way Amen. back in the 90s Amen. at LTV Channel 8, Amen. and how Abu Anifa yeah. would tell the stories, and all the children open their mouths, some of them, you know, saliva dropping know. down. Wow. Alhamdulillah, we are all alive today. Mashallah, may Allah keep us together in good faith in, 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 and, and yeah. reward us with Jannah, accept our Ramadan. And inshallah, Allah will keep us again together until we meet again in August. Don't go away. Remember to visit www.salamsisters.org for all the um, required updates. Barakallahu fi. Barakallahu ma biyamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha ila ant. Wa astakruka natubu ilayk. Subhanahu rabbika rabbil izzati ya maya sifun. Wa salam na la mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. I'm going to stop the recording now. Thank you very much, everybody. Fear Manila. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah.